Um, you know, we have our fun and joke around, but uh, this Carn City team, um, you can't help but like them. Uh, you know, a very tragic uh, thing happened to them. Their starting quarterback, week two, middle of the third quarter against Red Bank, um, went down. And, you know, the last reports through Facebook, uh, doing better, still not conscious, still yeah, that, that's major, a long time. Things, major things wrong. It seems like he's being uh, receptive to light and so forth and touch. But, uh, you know, you got to feel for this Carn City team and how they've come out. And actually, they've, they won three in a row after that. And they, they, they did lose last week to Clarion. But well, actually, I who mean, isn't Clarion? Who isn't losing to Clarion? Yeah, yeah you know, Clarion, so, there's going to be a lot of teams. So Carn City comes in three and three. But I just want to, again, just, you know, we just need to keep our uh, prayers with Mason Martin. Uh, the team comes out. They warm up without their stuff on. They all have uh, Mason Martin undershirts and so forth. So, um, it's homecoming. We're here to hit hard. We're here to play hard. Punksy to win. But uh, uh, mad respect to this Carn City team and the coaches and the staff that uh, are still dealing with this and still pushing through. Yeah, I mean, I think the big thing to remember here is, I mean, uh, it, it's a game. It's a game. You know, you want your kids to win, uh, but uh, be. But but even before that, you want all the kids to be safe, you know. And uh, you know, so much goes in now. Like uh, I just did my I just did my concussion, my concussion certification for the year for coaching, and just did my uh, cardiac certification. And uh, I mean, head injuries are no joke, and uh, you know, not something to be taken lightly. And I mean, a lot of people I know think that like, oh, the trainers go. Trainers go too far, the coaches go too far, whatever. But, you know, uh, you never want them to err anywhere but on the side of safety uh, when there's a child involved. Yeah, and, uh, again, uh, just respect, uh, you know, we had a long time Coach Albright, Chris Albright here, and we got, you know, Joel Bowers who does a great job. And, you know, Eric, Eric's coached forever, I've coached forever, and what the athletic what the uh, athletic trainer says goes. I mean, that's yeah, that's <laughs>
or visit us on the web at PAH.org. We look forward to providing you with a seamless and personal health care experience. Welcome back to the New Anchor Inn pregame show. Uh, beautiful job once again by the Punxsutawney Band with the National Anthem, a moment of silence for uh, Mason Martin, who is an honorary captain out there. Uh, as they bring his jersey out, uh, Punxsy captains, uh, Noah Weaver, Matthew Grusky, Mason Nesbitt and Zach Presley tonight. Um, Eric, a uh, couple keys tonight. This is, uh, you're going to come out, you know, um, Carnsey is going to run the football. That's, well, that's, I mean, that's, 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 that's what, what they're going to do. That's what they're, they are going to run the football. They, wanna, they're gonna do. they want seven, eight minute drives. Right. Uh, they want to score 13, 14 points and uh, win the ball game that way. Uh, I would really like to see the Chucks come out and uh, not have that, uh, not have that back alley brawl with them. The Chucks have a lot of skill. Uh, they have a lot of, uh, a lot of skill on offense. You know, we don't have to play smash mouth football with these guys. I think, you know, the rain stopped. The field seems pretty nice. Uh, Matt O'Hetricks had a nice game last week. Uh, our receivers have been coming up big. I hope they have something dialed up for these guys. Uh, that uh, makes it so... I, I want Carnage City to have to throw the ball. Yeah, and the Pugsy's going to get the ball to start that they want to toss, and they're going to receive. So we're going to get this Chuck's offense out right away. Uh, <clears throat> and the sophomore quarterback, Matt O'Hattrick, uh, will get things rolling. And like I said, Eric, I think, you know, we're going to see a lot of Landon Marts. We're going to see a lot of Landon Marts. <clears throat> we're going to see uh, Chuck's run game. But open it up. Quick scores. Let's get some scores. Yeah, Let's get it moving. Yep. Quick. Uh, you know, we got to take. You got to take Carn City out of their comfort zone of running the fo like like yes. you're saying. Force them to start throwing a little bit. Yeah. Like I mean, that's their brand of football. They want to gain. They want to gain two, three, and four yards at a time. And everything is a short. Everything going for everything on fourth down. Uh, the Chucks need to just take them out of their take them out of their element. Score quick. Get them off the field. Score quick. And, and <clears throat> yep, Noah Weaver is going to be back deep for the Chucks. Let me see if I can catch a number on who's kicking for Carn City. 20 something. Sorry, 26, I believe it looks like. Oh, there's no 26. I'll catch that. But it's going to be Logan Moore picking it up at about the 18. He's got room right up the middle. Logan Moore could go. It's the kicker to try to catch him, and he won't do it. Logan Moore. He's going That's 82 yards. And just like that, the Chucks are on the board. 6-0, 12 seconds into this game. That could not have started any better. That could not have started any better for the Chucks. 82 yards, Logan Moore right up the middle on the kickoff. And Eric, uh, he sure that's going to be a sweet there. play of the half very well. Yeah, very, that, that very could, good nomination. Yeah, that, yes, that, <laughs> yes, that could be nominated. Uh, as uh, wow, that was just like that. The Chucks' uh, offense will not come out on the field right away. It's, it was definitely the sweet play of the first 15 seconds. seconds. And Griffin White right down the middle, and the Chucks lead seven nothing. 12 seconds into this game, Logan Moore goes 82 yards on the kickoff return. We will stay right here. 
when when was the last time when was the last time you saw a Chucks return like that? I mean, uh, I mean that was nice. I, yeah, I, mean, I don't remember the last right up the middle, and he just put on speed. He had just enough. Uh, yeah, Braden I thought, Slater, I thought Braden, Braden, Braden Slater was right on his heels, and I thought right when he dove, I thought yeah. he had a chance at about the ten. I don't even uh, think he touched him. No, he never did. So just like that, the Chucks lead seven nothing here. Uh, our first quarter started, uh, and it's brought to you by Punxy Shop and Save. And, uh, wow, that was uh, a good beginning to this football game. Oh, yeah, I mean, and you know that takes you out of your, that takes you out of your game because last week when Dubois did it to us, I yes. mean, that's just, a, that's just a deflating thing that happens. Absolutely. So Matthew Grusky will uh, do the kicking for the Chucks. Well, I heard this week at practice uh, Grusky had been demoted. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. You know, so uh, I'm anxious to see what our kickoff looks like here. So I liked what they were doing last week in Dubois. I like those low liner kicks. If, right. you're, if you're not kicking it into the end zone, those low liners are a lot easier to cover. Looks like Tate Bailey, I believe number 10, is back deep for Carn City as Grusky gets set to kick off to his 40. He's kicking right to left in this in this. Uh, <clears throat> Opening first quarter, Chucks lead 7-0, 82-yard kickoff return, and it is picked up by an up back at about the 15, and a good return for Carn City. They're up across the 40 at about the 41 or 2. We're going to call it the 42-yard line, brought down by a host of Chucks. Yeah, and they're that, a and hard that was number 20 with the carry. That was Braden Slater with the carry. They're, they're a hard-running uh, hard team, whether it's on returns or whether it's on handoffs. So Carn City starting first and ten at their 42-yard line. And that is a big return. That's number four, uh, Luke Kramer. And it's Mason Nesbitt going to try to catch him, and he won't do it. And that is a 58-yard run. 58-yard touchdown, and just like that, we're 33 seconds into this game, Eric, and it is 7-6. One play, 58 yards by Luke Kramer. Well, you know, now we're going to get our offense on the field. And now we'll be, uh, well, we're one an extra point away, and this is, uh, is that number 11, I believe, Zach Kelly. Extra point attempt, and that looks good. Looks good. And it is. It's 7-7, seven, seven, 33 seconds into this game. We'll take a 30-second break. You're listening to a Laurel I Claim Jefferson County High School Sports Night right here on the Groundhog. The oldest restaurant in Jefferson County that's been operated continuously by one family. For less than two years, we'll be coming up on our 100th anniversary at the New Anchor Inn in Punxsutawney. It's probably the oldest, finest restaurant you've never heard of in Jefferson County. I remember my mother being anguish over one problem or another in the business, and her and my father looking at each other, and my mom would say, well, we must be doing something right, Chuck, because we're still here. The new anchor run in Punxsutawney, Route 310. Welcome back. Just like that, Eric, 7-7. Uh, seven, seven. So 82-yard kickoff return by Logan Moore. Extra point was good. Then right away, uh, a good return by Carn City up to the 42. In their very first play, it was just uh, big Luke Kramer. He's 6'2", 210, goes right up the middle and has some speed. Yeah, he, yeah, he ran was, away from guys. Yes, he did. And then uh, he went 58 yards for a Carn City touchdown, and the extra point was good there. So we're at 7'7", seven, seven with 33 seconds gone from this game, and this will be taken by... That's into the end zone. Into the end zone. Wasn't sure... Uh, uh, which Chuck wanted to take that, but it was okay because it just went into the end zone, so Punxsy will be starting after 20, first and 10, and uh, maybe we'll get things calmed down here a little bit, Eric. Well, yeah. I mean, that is uh, <laughs> it's 30, 33 <laughs> seconds into the game, and it's 7-7. Seven, seven. So uh, Chucks will be led out here by sophomore quarterback Matt O'Hetrick. He'll have Zach Presloy this side. Uh, Noah Weaver to the far side. Bo Thomas, the wing with Martz in the backfield. Under center is Hetrick. Little counter play right to Martz and he will pick up three to the 23. Second down seven. Luke Kramer with the tackle for the Gremlins. 
just underway here in our Punxy Soft and Save first quarter. And I say we're just underway, but we've already had 14 points scored, seven yeah. by each team. Yeah, if you're tuning in late. I mean, <laughs> Twins go to this side. It's still uh, Weaver and Presloid. Extra tight end in there on the far side. Thomas the wing. Mart's a sidecar to uh, Hetrick. Mart's trying to take it to the far side, tries to turn it up, and he has met where no gain. Good containment there by the defensive end yeah, there was against just, uh, Carn City. There was just no good, no good point to cut it upfield. So they'll give him one yard, it looks like. So we're going to get it to 24. It'll be third down and six for the Chucks as Mason Nesbitt, the tight end, tra uh, comes off. Trip receivers, that's Logan Moore, far side. He's by himself. Thomas comes in motion this way. He'll stop. Hetrick from the shotgun. Looking oh, my. Up in there. Hetrick looks. Now he's got wide open. Ah, too That's high. That's a little bit high to him at the 35. He can't make the catch, and it's going to be a punt for the Chucks. Well, nice design, though. Yeah, he was Nella wide open was there. wide open. Yep. That was going to go That was gonna go for big yardage. If you what, I, <clears throat> what I like there is, is, is uh, Hetrick had a lot of time, too. He didn't have to run around. He had plenty of time in that pocket. So that's something that's going to be crucial here uh for the rest of this game. It's good to see that he had some time. As it'll be uh, Adam Manners getting set to punt. He'll stand at about his 11. Nice snap. And oh, nice, nice punt. Ball. And this will be taken a fair caught nice. at the 40 yard line of uh, that was Zach Kelly. That was a nice spiral punt. Yep. Manners has gotten off uh, Manners has gotten off a couple of real nice punts recently. 10.02 remaining here in the first quarter. Brought to you by Punxsy Shop and Save. Carn City starting at their 40-yard line. First and 10. 7-7 seven, seven to score. Kickoff return for the Chucks and then a 58-yard rush. Okay, let's touchdown. settle things down here. <laughs> yes. So under center is Johnston. He'll give it to Kramer. Kramer right up the middle. He'll pick up positive yards. As coming out of the bottom of that pile is Martz and Nesbitt. Give that's four yards that's to the a, 44. That is the style of offense they play. They're going to run Kramer right into you. Second down and six for the Gremlins. Clock running at 9.38 here in this first quarter. Double tight end look. Double wing, excuse me. It's a uh, nice that tackle. Is, uh, I believe that is their other running back. Yep, that's Hunter Scherer, number 23. He'll get two yards to the 46. Now they're going to call it the 47. So it's third down and three for Carn City. And like you said, Eric, that's that's their game plan. They want to go up the middle as much as possible. They're going to get if they you get three times three yeah. yards. That's the first down. So yep. And they're uh... now they're going to go with twin receivers each side. Just as we're talking about the run. Well, yeah, they're going to run it. <laughs> As the quarterback, Johnson, will keep it, and he's going to be short. Yeah, he's going to get a yard, I think. And it looks like maybe Markham's still at the 47. I'm going to call it no gain. Coming up out of there, I'll give it to Anthony Gold. And it'll be a punt time for the Gremlins. So each team scores early, and then both teams are now punting. But well, this is always that little zone where you just yeah. got to watch those fakes. You yep. just got to watch the fakes around the 50. Well, especially a team like this. I mean... <laughs> It's, it's short yardage. They don't need much. Yep. As snap back. Yeah, he's going to punt it away. That's Kelly. And Ooh. Logan Moore's back deep. He'll yeah, let I mean, it go. That, and I, you and know. it'll go inside the 10 all the way down. looks to be about the 7-yard line. So, that's, Punxy. That right there, I mean, anybody that's not watching this, uh, you, you shouldn't be condemning Moore for not feeling that ball. Yeah, that was a tough one. That ball hit eight yards in front of him and took a weird hop. Yep. I mean, that was a, uh, we have the ball right now. I mean, that's that's the big thing. Punksy has it first and ten at their own seven here. Eight ten to go, first quarter, brought to you by Punksy Shop and Save. Seven seven the score. Thomas, the wing to the right, under center is Hetrick. Martz in the eye back. It's Martz with that counter up the middle. He'll get three to the ten. Second down and three. Or excuse me, second down and seven after a three-yard gain. 
Martz will, uh, Morris check in, excuse me, as Nesbitt, the tight end, comes out. They'll go twin receivers to each side with Thomas now coming out to the near side of his receiver. Shotgun for Hetrick. Thomas will join the triple on the far side. Quick slant, and it's oh, out of the hands of Thomas. That was a much better pass. As that goes incomplete. Make it third down and seven. That was a much better pass there. That one had some zip on it. Yeah, I mean, sure. I think that, that was. Quickly, it'll go trips to the far side. Now, two, two passing plays. We've had open receivers on both of them. I mean, and time to throw. Third down and a long seven. Back to pass. Has a man. It's Weaver. And oh, oh, he was hit. Oh, flag. Yeah. And that is going to be That's going to be a 15-yarder yeah. there. That's going to be a. I don't, I don't even know point. that it wasn't pass interference. Yeah, it was really close. It's definitely going to be a flag on Carn City as Weaver took a shot. Comes right back up. All popped up, yeah. No problems. But it's going to be a personal foul on the Gremlins. It's going to be 15 yards, and it'll be a Chuck's first down. Yeah, that's a nice one there. I mean, don't like seeing Weaver taking that hit, but he did pop right back up. And not only was it helmet to helmet, I mean, I thought it was early. All the way out, Chuck's will have it first and 10 after 25 now with 7.32 to go here in the first quarter. Yeah, it's a much better, much better spot to work from. Hetrick under center. Two in the backfield for the Chucks. A little, almost like a little power oh. fumble. Picked up by Hetrick, and he'll fall forward. Nice wow, he's going to get like five yards out of that. It's going to get real close to five. We'll see if they mark it. I think they're going to give him four. And we'll, yeah, we're gonna, we'll give it four. It's going to be second down and six for the Chucks. Again, Hetrick, same formation. Chucks go under center. Hand off. This is to Martz. Martz nice run. Has a room. Has a first down. Oh, he's around the corner. And he was out about 50. right around the 50-yard line. As they'll call it the 48 of Punksy. 19 yards. But a nice hard run by Martz. He was led up through by, I believe, Nesbitt led him up through there. And nice. that was a nice design play by the Chucks. Yep. They'll go with that same formation. Nesbitt and Martz in the backfield. They'll hurry it up. And this time it's uh, March, and he'll get to Two. the 50, and that'll be it. Second down and eight. Clock will continue to run under 6.50 to go here in the first quarter. Chucks will have that heavy package in there. They got Jordan Rutana's tight end. Nesbitt checks in there for Thomas. It's a rollout pass. Oh. Thomas is in there, and it is going to be Noah Weaver with the catch and a first down on the far sideline. Nice little out pass to Weaver, and that is all the way down. 31 or 32. 30. We're going to mark this around a 33 maybe. So 17, 17 yards. yard pass play, first and 10 for the Chucks. And they are rolling here as they go out of bounds. Clock stopped at 621. I mean, Weaver is definitely... Uh, Definitely uh, his go-to target. Yes. He's the guy he looks for when. So waiting for the stop here. I think we got to change the clock maybe or something. As I think they're trying to get the clock, the time adjusted. As. Trying to get the play clock straight now here. Just let you know, uh, as we're continuing here, it is homecoming here in Punxsutawney. And uh, i got a second here to announce the young ladies that are in the Queen's Court. It is Catherine Crago, Kylie Deem, Danielle Gribble, Natalie Miller, Rachel Parada, and Kylie Smith. So, first of all, congratulations to those young ladies for being selected by their senior peers uh, to be out here this evening. And uh, also... Uh, Got a nice evening for it. <laughs> it wasn't looking good early on, even today. But it turned out to be a nice evening. So congratulations to those girls. And we'll have that Queens Court for you here at halftime as we get the adjustments made. As 
First and 10 for the Chucks at the Gremlin 33-yard line. Hetrick is going to go under center. I like that last pass. He was under center. They were expecting a run. Double wing look here for the Chucks. In motion comes March. He'll get the fake, and he'll go up the top. Oh, nice run. And Bo Thomas will get across the 30 to about the 29. We'll give him four yards. Second down and six. That was a, that was a nice play. I like that. Just a quick hitter there, getting Martz a little bit of a breather. You know, it's okay. You can stay out on the field, just get a little bit of a break. That's yeah. okay. Yeah, I don't think Martz got tackled on that play. And Martz will take it this time. Tries to bounce it out, and I'll cut in. He'll get to the 25, give him four more yards, and we'll make it a uh, third down and two. And now we'll bring in a couple extra receivers. That'll bring out our double tight end look. As Nope, never mind. <laughs> Rutan and Nesbitt come halfway off the field, and then, nope, you guys stay back out there. Moore and Presloid will come running back in. Third down and two. We'll keep that heavy package out there. The lone receiver is Weaver to the far side. Under center, Hetrick. Nesbitt, as that was Cole Johnston with the tackle. First and ten for the Chucks. I like the, all the mess, all the mixing it up they're doing. Under five minutes to go here in the first quarter. Brought to you by Punksy Shop and Save. Chucks and Gremlins tied at seven. Hetrick goes under center. Hand off to Nesbitt again. He'll cut it up the middle. Nice pause of yards. Another four or five. As we'll call it looks to be at the 12. Four yard gain. That was the 10th play of this drive, and it all started, you know, really the, the play was over, yeah. except for that third down penalty uh, on the Gremlins, and the Chucks have been making it uh, pay off for them here as they have it second down and six at about the 12-yard line for Punksy as Nesbitt, uh, excuse me, that was... Uh, Hetrick here, he's going to get the ball a little orbit to Martz. Martz falls forward inside the 10. He's going to be about a yard short, I think, as he's going to be marked down about the 9. He's going to bring up third down and 1. Well, I guess a little bit further than that, Eric. I got a little crazy there. Third down and we'll call it 3. Ball placed at about the just inside the 10. Almost got the defense to jump there as Hetrick goes under center again. Hand off to Thomas. Thomas will push forward. Nice He'll get run. the first down. Inside the 5 to the 4. It'll be first and goal for the Chucks. Very efficient drive here for Punxsutawney. As they just keep working things. 325 running clock here in the first quarter. Well, I like how much they're mixing it up with Thomas and Martz and Nesbitt. Yeah, getting I, everybody I like involved. that. Uh, keeps the defense off balance again under center this is the most I've seen Hetrick under center this yeah. season uh, in, in one drive as it's again that orbit marts and he'll get no gain we'll call it second and goal from a four clock continuing to run here very quick first quarter after those quick scores. Yeah. This first quarter has been moving right along. Punksy's had the ball uh, since the 8-10 mark of this quarter. We're down to 240. Rolling out. Being chased down as he's going to keep it and go into the end zone. Nice. Four-yard touchdown for Matto Hetrick on the keeper. And the Chucks take a 13-7 lead with 232 to go here in the first quarter. That was a uh, that was a nice run by Hetrick there. He could hear the footsteps. Nice little spin move into the end zone to avoid contact. As Griffin White will attempt the extra point. And, and that one blocked. is blocked. Uh, and it so will be 13-7 to 7 as we uh, take a 30-second break. You're listening to a little eye clinic, Jefferson County High School Sports Night, right here on the Groundhog. Punxy Shop and Save is wishing the Chucks football team, marching band, and cheerleaders the best of luck this year. Give it your all and have fun doing it. 
And you can always count on Punxy Shop and Save to have all your needs for game day. Go Chucks! Napa Midtown Auto Parts, we know do-it-yourself. Napa Midtown Auto Parts is a proud supporter of local sports and will back you on any of your DIY projects. Come see us at 110 South Gilpin or give us a call at 938-6363. Napa Midtown Auto Parts. Welcome back. DJ and Eric here with you. 2.32 to go here in the first quarter. 13-7 Chucks. The Chucks took a 14-play drive starting at their own 7-yard line. Helped out by a 15-yard penalty by the Gremlins. that kept that play moving. But the Chucks uh, get on the board. A 4-yard touchdown run by Matto Hetrick. Extra point was no good. Uh, Chucks lead 13-7 here. 2.32 in the first quarter. <laughs> as Krusky getting <laughs> set to call, kick. It's a line drive kick, and it's oh tipped my. and then picked up by, that is uh, number 20, Braden Slater, and this time the Chucks do a good job as he's brought down at the 31-yard line or so. We'll see where they mark it. No, I just need to see it. Yeah, it'll be the 31. A defensive stand like the... The Chucks had last drive here. Yeah. Let's get the ball back. 2.24 to go for your first quarter. Brought to you by Punxy Shop and Save. Uh, the kids told me today that the Chucks do not have an interception yet this year. They've had a couple that were called back. and So they don't have a, an official interception yet. So right now would be a good time for one. If you drop back and, and throw. Got an official timeout. Set the play clock. There we go. Or the game clock. The, excuse me, the play clock. They had the tee on the field. They ran out there to get it. So now we're set to go. As it'll be... We haven't said much about the <laughs> Corn City's offense. Cole Johnston in the shotgun. Twin receivers each side. He'll be back to pass. Looks this way. Hits a flat. It is... Oh! oh! And then we're caught. That is caught by Zach Kelly, number 11. Boy, Logan Moore almost had a pick six oh, there. No. Brought down there by Bo Thomas, but it's enough for a first down to the 42-yard line, so 11 yard yards, game. first and 10. Boy, that was that was definitely going to be a, uh, a touchdown if he intercepts that because there's My. nobody there. Nice tackle by Thomas. Under center is Johnston. Hands off to Cher. He's tripped up but keeps on going. And he'll get positive yards. Anthony Gould did a nice job back there, but Cher kept on his feet, picks up four to the 46-yard line. Second down, six. Who got the tackle on that? I did not see that, Eric, honestly. As Carn City will come out once again, they'll go with a... Traditional pro look with the fullback and the I formation. This is Cher again, stays ah. on his feet, breaks a tackle, breaks another one, stays on his feet, and now gets a nice block, and he is on his way, and he's inside the 15. Zach Presley puts the pounding on him, but it's a big gain as we'll see where they officially spot this. We're going to mark him right at the 10, so 44 that yards. is a huge run for... Uh, Share, Hunter Share, and it is a. I think it's going to be a first goal. It looks like the nose of the football is touching the ten, so this is a. This is as long as a goal, first and goal as you can get. Yep, without a penalty. It's first and goal from just at the ten yard line. Power eye look. It's Kramer right up the middle, and boy, is this man tough to bring down. He gets three or four wrapped up by several chucks, including Nesbitt and Martz. Second and goal from the seven, so just a three-yard gain. Minute and 15 running clock here in the first quarter. Chucks lead 13 to seven. Carn City in no hurry here as they got plenty of time on the play clock. Bring a couple guys out. Johnston brings them out of the huddle. We'll go with a double wing look. The tight end under center. It'll be a quick hitter to share up the middle, and he gets to the four-yard line, brought down by a host of Chucks, as we will give that to, I believe, Martz once again. You know, so many guys in there, you can give it to whoever 
you know, you come out of the pile. I just try to always find that bottom guy. Under 30 seconds to go. They do have to run a play here. There's a two-second difference. Third and goal from the four. It's a big stop here for the Chucks. Yeah, the Chucks can stop them, you know, hold them to a field goal attempt yeah, or I, going on fourth yeah. down. I mean, I formation, Johnston under center. It's Kramer, and he will pull his way. He's going to be short. Woo! As he's to the one coming out of there is Noah Weaver helping out there as long with Nesbitt and Wesneski. It's going to be fourth and goal from the one, and that'll from the two-yard line it looks like. Nope, they're going to call it the one, I believe. But that'll do it for the first quarter. Yeah, it looks like they're inside the one. It's been entertaining. I think it'll be right at the one-yard line. When we come back, we'll take a one-minute break to start the second quarter. You're listening to Laurel Eye Clinic, Jefferson County High School Sports Night. Right here on the Groundhog. Hi, I'm Mike, uh, your neighborhood pharmacist at the medicine shop. Definitely service. We take the time to get to know our patients, their health care needs, and we like to think that we're always approachable. If you have a question, you can come to us. You're not bothering us. Trust us. We care about your health and well-being. Welcome back, DJ and Eric here with you. Entertaining uh, first quarter. Uh, we had a kickoff return. We had uh, a 58-yard touchdown run. Uh, we've had a 44-yard a 40, yeah, 40 run. We've by had Kara. a touchdown by Hetrick. We've had all kinds of stuff going on here, and it's 13-7 uh, Chucks, and it's going to be fourth. And Four goal for the there. one, and uh, Gremlins are going to go for it here. So stack backfield, and I think the Chuck stopped them. They did. The Chucks hold, as I believe it was Kramer trying to go through there. Wow. Actually, I think it was a quarterback sneak, and they just tried to push him in, and it didn't work. Wow. And the Chucks hold. Who is that in the middle of the line there for the Chucks? Uh, that would probably have been Grusky or Schaefer. I mean, that was big. As the Chucks hold, it'll they'll have the ball. It looks like they even gave them a loss of yard. So it's a two at the two yard line of Punksy. They will start 13 to seven. They lead. What a hold there for the Chucks. Well, now the thing is, the Chucks have to at least drive themselves out of their own the shadow of their own end zone here. Hetrick under center. He'll hand off. That's Martz. Martz tries to find his way outside. Gerald's up near the 10. Nice. Probably around the eight or so. Good solid run by yes. the Chucks. Punksy going uh, 11, excuse me, left to right here on their second quarter. Brought to you by Big Run. And they will mark it at the 8-yard line. So 6-yard gain. Second and 4 for the Chucks. That's a nice little gain. Gives them a little breathing room here. Again, Hetrick under center. It's going to be Thomas and Martz in the backfield. Nesbitt the wing to the far side. He comes in motion. He'll be the orbit guy. It'll be a pitch to Nesbitt, trying to get him outside. He'll cut it back in, and a good hard hit. He's going to be close to first down. Uh, they're only giving him we'll see one there. there. He's really marked at, at yeah, about the 12, so it's going to be a yard short, I think. Yep, it's going to be third down and one. Ball just inside the, uh, just outside the 10 at the 11, so Third and one for the Chucks under center. Hetrick, hand off Martz. Martz will find that yard. He'll get it, and there is a fumble, I think. As it is a turnover, and the Gremlins got it. I just kind of saw uh, Hetrick the way he was going. Fumble, and Kern City picks it up, and they will have it first and goal at the nine. Now we have to hold again. I'm not sure who picked that up, Eric. It was just in a big crowd. But at 10:40, Barn <sighs> City will come first and goal at the nine-yard line of Punksy, and another hold here for the Chucks defense. 
They'll split those. Uh, they'll they'll uh, stretch out the field. Yeah, they're not each side. They're not going to crowd the box. Kramer. Like they he'll take a jet sweep. He tries to turn the corner, and he has met Wesneski. Does a great job along with Bo Thomas. And he's going to be set there, I be maybe a yard at the most, but a great job. Grusky actually kind of blew that play up in the backfield as he was just not able to get there, but uh, Kramer had to keep stretching it out. And Wesneski did a great job there from the defensive ends part. And it'll be second down, and goal will give him one yard to the eight. Pushed out of bounds, 10.33, clock stopped here, second quarter. Chucks lead 13-7, but they're trying to stop the Gremlins who are inside of 10 for a second time. And timeout taken by Punxsutawney. We'll take a 30-second break with them. You're listening to Laurel Eye Clinic, Jefferson County High School Sports Night, right here on the Groundhog. Ready for the game? Are you sure? What about your eyes? You'll want to be able to see all the action clearly. Dr. Gribble and everyone at Gribble Eye Care can help. You depend on your eyes. Depend on Gribble Eye Care. No referrals necessary. Schedule your appointment in person or at 938-4777. Not just cataract. Get your full line of eye care at Gribble Eye Care. And eyelid and diabetic procedures, too. No need to go out of town. Find them at Punxsy Hospital, 2nd floor, Suite 2500, Gribble Eye Care. Welcome back, DJ and Eric here with you, and uh, Jimmy back at the studio. And Eric, uh, talk about these cupcakes real quick. Here we have a second as Lily sweet play of the half. Uh, so far, it's going to be Logan Moore. And yeah, so far. So far, we got. I got. I just went to the. Tri I think you like these ones too. I just yeah, went the, the uh, butter and chocolate. Yep, with yeah. the little Hersey kiss on top. Uh, Jimmy, I got him some cupcakes, and he was raving about the peanut butter ones that he got. Uh, earlier today as well so want to thank Lils and, you know we're talking about the cupcakes and there's somebody that that just loves us talking about the cupcakes oh you mean Mark Cupcake Miller Mark Cupcake Miller he's he's he should be listening he's, he's the only thing sweeter than a Lily's cupcake <laughs> uh, I don't know if Leanne would think that but uh later that but uh want to make sure I got Mark's name out there as the Chucks go and it's a sweep and it's going to be a touchdown as they went with number 11 Zach Kelly they ran a little fake to the middle guy, and then he just come around, and he had no one to catch him on the outside. And Zach Kelly ties this thing up at 13 with 10.28 to go with the yeah. extra point for Carn City And Cullen. the Gremlins have a chance to take the lead here. I mean, and, uh, if the first extra point was any indication. And Kelly's extra point is up and good, and yeah. Carn City leads this game 14-13, 10.28 to go. We'll take a 30-second break. You're listening to a Laurel Eye Clinic Jefferson County High School Sports Night right here on the Groundhog. Life challenges can sometimes catch us off guard, but at Marion Center Bank, we believe in safeguarding your financial future. Introducing Ultimate ID Plus, a powerful product. Right after this, and thanks again for the cupcakes, fellas. <laughs> no problem, Jimmy. You got it. Love it. Safety net. Protect your medical and health benefits with comprehensive monitoring. Ultimate ID Plus keeps a vigilant eye on your social media identity and your driver's license, preventing fraudulent activities. Contact local branch office or visit us at MerriamCenterBank.com for more information. Merriam Center Bank, member FDIC. Welcome back. As Carn City two-play drive, just uh, after the fumble recovery. Yeah, uh, after an incredible, after an incredible stop on fourth yeah. down inside the one-yard line. Uh, we brought it out of the shadow of the end zone there and uh, unfortunately turned it over. And then Carn City runs a little jet sweep with Kelly, who uh, it was well designed because it was definitely a fake up the middle. Kind of got me there, too, until I saw him racing through there. As Brandon Slater, uh, Braden Slater, excuse me, gets set to kick off. AC Slater. Line drive. This one could That's go, out, go bounds, out of bounds. And it will. Yeah, Chuck's and it Chuck's Chuck's will have position. real good field position here to start their next drive. Trailing 14 to 13 here with 10-28 in the second quarter. Brought to you by Big Run Flooring. Punksy should have the football first and 10 at their 35-yard line. So good start here for Punksy. And just to regroup, we're, we're moving the football. There's no question we're moving the football I think we're going to, I think this drive, I think you're going to see us open it up a little bit here, Eric, with the. Yeah, I'd like to see, I'd like to see him, that, that last drive, I mean, they methodically drove it down the field, but the passing plays are open. Yes. The passing plays are open. 
I'd like to see Thomas or Presloid or Weaver with a little take one with a little room to run. As single set back, that's Martz. Under center is Hetrick. As he'll roll out the pass. Looks down the field and is caught. That is Nesbitt. And he'll pick up about 12. Give it 13. They'll mark him at the 48-yard line. So there's that little drag route across the middle with a tight end. And it was wide open. Good pass. Good catch. And nice little run afterwards for Nesbitt. It's first and 10 for the Chucks. Yeah. Like that's, <laughs> that's what I want to see. I mean... Twin receivers to the far side. Nesbitt, the tight end. He'll come this side. In motion is Thomas. He'll stop as the wing to the far side. Rolling that way. Hetrick has Thomas in the flat. Now he'll throw it down. He'll have Presslord wide open. And he'll be pushed out of bounds after a big gain. Hetrick right on the money to Presslord. Looks like they're going to mark him at the 28-yard line. A 20-yard gain. First and 10 for the Chucks. Back-to-back -back pass plays. Punksy opening things up here a little bit. They trail 14 to 13, 9.58 to go here in the second quarter. Again, Martz in the backfield. Lone setback. That trick again goes under center. It's a counter. It's Martz, and he'll drive forward to the 25. Gives him three yards, second down and seven. Chucks continue to move the football here. See what they go with here as taking a little bit of time to get this play in. Plenty of time on Lots the clock. Lots of time, though. yeah. Go, twins to the far side, also the wing to the far side. Under center again, Hetrick. He'll pitch to Martz. Tries to get it outside, and he'll pick up a few yards. Makes it third down in mid-range. Give him another couple yards. I'll mark him. It looks to be the 18, yeah, 19-yard line. So one-yard gain. Third and five. Under nine minutes to go here. Clock running at 8.55. Second quarter brought to you by Big Run Flooring. And the Chucks trailing 14-13, but they are on the move in Carn City territory. Hetrick again rolls this way. Looks has gotten a flat at oh, it just out of the reach. Out of the reach. Uh, yep, just a little bit out of the reach for Weaver, and it'll bring up a fourth down. And uh, Chucks will, I think, will definitely be going for it. Well, I think we have to. I mean, we're inside the 25-yard line. We're not really in field goal range, and clock stopped at 8:40. You know they've been running that sweep there. I'm surprised they've never run that with Anthony Gold. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Because he's so fast. Trips will go to this side. This will be Hattrick in the shotgun here with Martz to his right. Rolls out. Now pulls forward. And oh, that's a, ball that's and that's a fumble. Believe. They're going to call that a fumble, and it's going to be at the 40-yard line. I thought, boy, I thought that was incomplete. But they just come charging in, and Hattrick, yeah, they're going to call it a fumble. And it's going to be another turnover to the Gremlins, and they'll have it first and 10 after 40. Actually thought he was throwing that, but from here, it, it must have just come out just before his hand went forward. So back-to-back -back fumbles for Punsey offensively here. Well, and, uh, you know, that was unfortunate because I'll tell you what, they, they had the ball quick. moving. They had yeah. the ball moving, and then they went back, run, run. You know, and then under center, Johnston has time. Now he's going to be crushed, and that's Anthony Gould, I believe. No, that's Mertz. <laughs> Come right up the middle. I actually thought that was Anthony Gould off the end, but that was actually Landon Mertz. Come right up the middle with a big sack. That's a back to the 31 yard line. Yeah, nine yard. Nine yard loss. So second down and 19, and that is huge for this Chuck's defense here. Yeah, we near the eight-minute mark here in the second quarter. Again, Carn City leading 14 to 13. Johnston now under center, double wing, handoff. Nope, he's going to keep it himself. Come this way, has the move, he's got and the up run. the middle, and he'll get the first down. Yep. Logan Moore and Zach Presloyd with the tackle, but he crosses the 50. 
He needed 19 and got 20 to the 49 of the Chucks. And boy, that was a nice run by that young man. He's a freshman quarterback. Cole Johnston, who's filling in, uh, unfortunately, Mason Martin, the injured uh, Carn City uh, player, he was their starting quarterback. That was a nice run. That was a very nice run. 7.33 here on a running clock. Just inside the 50 of the Chucks for the Gremlins. High formation. Pitch to... That is Slater, and, and he's, he's going to lose, lose a yard. yard as Noah Weaver comes up from the safety spot. That was number 20, Braden Slater, with the carry. He'll lose one. Back to the uh, 40, just inside the, the 50. Make it second down 11. Excuse me, we'll call just outside the 50. So it's now on the Gremlin side of the ball, side of the field. Again, I formation for Carn City. This is Kramer. He is met in the backfield, and then he's going to be brought down. He gets maybe that yard back. It's going to bring up third and ten as Grusky comes out of the bottom of that pile. Well, I mean, you can't even say they need to dial up a pass play here because yeah. they have runs tonight of uh, yeah. 40, 44, and 58 yards. So yeah. The big, the big quarterback sneak there on the last quarterback keeper went for 20. So, sec, or excuse me, third down and 10, ball at the 50-yard line for Carn City. 6-10 to go here in the running clock in the second quarter. Leading our Chucks by one. Back to pass. Johnson, he'll roll out, has room, throws down the middle, and it is going to be in and out of the hands, just out of the reach. He was open, too. That was Kelly, and Johnson actually on the run there made a pretty good pass. Pretty nice pass. Just, just let him a little bit too much. I mean, that was pretty nice. I mean... And it should be a punt now for Carn City, and it will in a fourth and ten as whole, uh, wholesale changes for both teams as the punt unit comes out, as it will be, uh, I believe, Zach Kelly doing the punting. I hate seeing anybody that open. Yeah, Logan Moore will stand at about his 15. As time out will have to be taken by Carn City as they didn't have enough guys on. So we'll take a 30-second break with them. You're listening to Laurel Eye Clinic, Jefferson County High School Sports Night, right here on the Groundhog. We got our new carpet installed. I'm so happy with it. I mean, it's just carpet, right? But I absolutely love it. Big Run did an awesome job. You mean Big Run Carpet? Oh, it hasn't been called that in years. The new owner renamed it Big Run Flooring. Oops. Sorry, old habits die hard. Most places take forever to install. We got ours installed in less than a month. My husband is a contractor, and he'd love to hear those turnaround times. Big Run Flooring in Big Run on 119, just before Marion Center Bank. Welcome back. DJ and Eric here with you. And 6.03 to go here, second quarter. 14-13. The uh, Gremlins are leading. They are going... They're in punt formation on a fourth and ten yeah, at the 50. Yeah. That's what I like to say. When you get around the size, like a punt formation, because anything can happen. I don't know if we've seen a fake this year, though, have uh, we? I don't think we have. As still trying to get the play clock squared away. As... I like that. They just let the official talk in the headset. That's the way to do it. Here, what, this is what I need. Okay. Thank you. And we move on. So 6.03 as it is Zach Kelly, number 11 for Gremlins. He'll be set to punt. Logan Moore will stand at his 20. I don't know if he's deep enough. Kelly seems to have a pretty good leg. He'll stand at about And he's a good runner too. So. Yeah. And snap, a little high, but he brings it down. and Oh, it they were there. As Moore will take it at the 20, and that's down where he'll go, right Ooh. there, by Slater. So Chucks will have it first and 10 after 20. That was pretty brave there. That was a nice job fielding the ball by yep. Nice job by yep. Moore fielding the ball and knowing he was going to take a big hit. Yep. So here comes Punksy once again, starting at their 20. As Martz is going to check out. I 
We're going to have to take a timeout here. And Griffin White needs to check back in. We got plenty. They haven't even started to finish. Oh, okay. It was, it was running. Yep. It looked like it was. So here we go. As Griffin White will check in for the Chucks. Twin receivers to this side for Punksy. They're going left to right here. Wing is Thomas to the far side. Pass. Complete the press Lloyd. And Hold the ball. Stays on his feet. He'll get the necessary. I think he just yeah. got 10. Right to the 30. It's a first and 10. Nice quick slant. I love those quick slants. I love those quick slants, Eric. I, I mean, yeah. they are there. When that, when that corner is going to play you off five, six yards, that's there all day. Right. And... I mean, it's going to be a quick pass, and it's accurate, because if it's not, it could be picked. But but the thing is, I mean, they got, caught him by his jersey there, yeah. or he might still be running. First and 10 from the 30 now. Same look under center. This time, Martz is back in, and he'll stay on his feet. Hold the keep ball. Keep that ball. As he'll pick up two to the 32, second down and eight. 5.20 on a running clock here in the second quarter. Again, second quarter brought to you by Big Run Flooring. Chucks trail 14 to 13. The Chucks need to keep this ball for all five minutes. Yep. and take Drive it, it down, take it in the end zone, go for two. Make it 21-14. As, again, the twin receivers to this side. Hat trick from the shotgun. Wing look is Thomas on the far side. This will be March. Nope, fake. As, again, that slant to Presley, that's a first down. Uh, we've got a flag in but here. there's a penalty marker down. Let's see what the call is. I think somebody moved early. It's going to be a five-yarder, I think. I don't know. I don't know what they're calling. It came in after the... Yeah, I think it's going to be on the chocks. Illegal man yeah. downfield. Wow. Well, what? I mean... He, he just hit him on a three-yard <laughs> slant, yeah, and there's an illegal man downfield. Yeah. They got that called on them last week in Dubois, and the kids were telling me it was the tight end when the referees came over to talk about it, it was the tight end that was the illegal man downfield. So five-yard penalty makes it second and 14. Or second and... Boy, that looks like it's only a four-yard penalty, doesn't it, Eric? Yeah, well... Yeah. I mean... I mean, I guess uh, it's second and 15. It should be. The ball back to the 26-yard line, I guess. So the ball must have been around the 31 to start here. Hetrick rolls out, looks this way. Nice block. Keeps on running. Now he has a man. That's Nesbitt. Caught. And that should be a first, first down. down. It was going to be a receiver screen and uh, just not a real good pass, to be honest with you. Second down and 10. As it looked like Johnston thought Kelly was going to stay a little bit f further out. And Kelly tried to go closer to the uh, line of scrimmage. So incomplete, 133 to go here in the first quarter, just three seconds off the clock, but it's second down 10. Yeah, this is huge for the Chucks. The Chucks need to stop. They need to stop them here. Yep. Card City does get the football to start the second half. You can't give up any big plays. Again, twins each side. Johnston has time. Now comes out of there. He can run. And, and he, he falls. Flips. He slipped down. It's going to be a loss of three back to the 35. Credit Anthony Gold with the tackle. But a break for the Chucks, and it'll bring up third down and 13. I think that's right. Yeah, I think Mike Solera put an oil spot right there. And the clock... Uh, is running here. So nobody's taking time. Carn City, I think they're, they're content to let the rock Yeah, rock they're, they now. know they're getting the ball back. They know they're getting the ball back. I can back. see that. I think this is going to be a run, Eric, to be honest. Nope. Back to pass Johnson. Aiden Schaefer all over him. It's a screen. And nice throw there by tackle. Anthony Gould to take it out on Hunter Scherer. And that's a loss of two more back to the 33. And the Chucks will take a timeout. That was Punksy's second timeout, 58 seconds remaining. That was a beautiful tackle by Gold. And Carn City's going to have to punt, so very good defensive stance there by the Chucks. As uh, coming up here at halftime, our Punksy McDonald's halftime, we'll have our scores of the first half. Eric will have some stats for you. We'll have the Queens Court, so we'll have an extended halftime. We'll uh, have the Queens Court for you as well. 
and then uh, we'll let you listen to some advertisements and so forth. Those folks that allow us to bring you this coverage each and every week here on Chuck's Football 2023. And uh, it's been a really interesting, entertaining first half. It really has been. It's been entertaining. As Brendan Slater will look to punt for Carn City as Logan Moore will stand at his 35-yard line. So Punksy, uh, chance to get some more points on the board here, really. Yeah. I mean, like, boy, if we could get a nice return here. Get the ball up around midfield anyway would be nice. So a good snap this time as another Slater nice punt it away as Moore will take it at the third oh. and stay on his feet and gets up to the forty-one <laughs> yard line. All right, I, I I complain about the officials all the time for the Punksy's direction. We just got away with a we just got away with a giant block in the back. So. It'll work to our favor. Punksy will yeah. be at their 41. We'll see how aggressive they want to be. They have a timeout remaining. I, I'll tell you. I mean, I, I maybe put Hetrick in the shotgun, let him roll. I yeah. mean, we called the timeout. There was no reason to call a timeout if we're going to be... Hetrick will put March to his right. He'll be in the shotgun. Thomas also... The wing to the right. Double, uh, excuse me, twin receivers to the far side. Martz will take it. Looks up through the middle. Has a big gap. He'll get the first one. And there's a flag. There's a flag. It's going to be a that hold. That was a beautiful run. And we're going to have a hold on the Chucks. It's in the area of a hold. Let's put it yeah, that way. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a hold. All the way down near the 40, but it's going to be holding on Punksy. So it'll bring up second or first and 20 from the oh, man. Uh, 31 yard line. That's a killer. And that makes you think a little differently now with 39 seconds remaining. Punksy leads 21-14. Well, it makes the Gremlins think a little bit differently now, too. Yeah. I'll be real honest. I might take a shot. Yeah, they have. I mean, they got the guys. They're dropping them back into defense. But I might see if I can hit Thomas. I might see if I can hit Thomas press I mean, they're bringing in, a, you know, a so new package. First down and about 18 or so. Ball at the 33-yard line. Martz with the pitch to the outside, and he'll get to the 35, and that's it. <coughs> Maybe to the 36, but just a couple-yard gain, and as the clock winds down to 18 here, punks yeah, eight. Everybody looks be to be content to just call this a half. Just checking with currency. They're not in any hurry. Either is Punksy, and, and they're going to let the clock run out. Yep, We'll take it to halftime. So the Chucks here on homecoming, they lead 21-14. We will go ahead and take a three-minute break. Jimmy, we'll take a three-minute break. When we come back, we'll get you the rundown of the scores and some stats along with the Queens Court right here on the Laurel Eye Clinic Jefferson County High School Sports Night on the Groundhog. a couple weeks ago when my car broke down countryside is who towed and fixed my car i'm going back to countryside next week for new tires they do it all countryside tire and repair state inspections towing and yes new tires in punxatani behind s t bank by the railroad track 242 hampton avenue 814-249-7510 310 Lawn and Gardens Inventory Reduction Event going on now. Overstocked with lawnmowers, zero turns, tractors, snow plows, and snow blowers. Brands you can trust. Gag, Ferris, Simplicity, Snapper, Wright, Still Zero Turns, LS Tractors, Meyer, and Snowwave Snow Plows. All units are priced to sell with instant rebates on all in-stock models up to $1,000. Hurry in. These deals won't last. 310 Lawn and Garden, your local trusted dealer. Route 310 between Reynoldsville and Punxsy. Jefferson Machine Company is proud to be a part of our community and is proud to support the Punxsutawney Chucks football team. Jefferson Machine, a leader in heavy equipment repair and replacement, Route 119 in Punxsutawney. Call 938-6420. That's 938-6420. Good luck to the Punxsy Chucks from Jefferson Machine Company. Engineering today for a better tomorrow. Jefferson Machine. <laughs> Operated continuously by one family. Less than two years, we'll be coming up on our 100th anniversary at the new anchor in Punxsutawney. 
was probably the oldest, finest restaurant you've never heard of in Jefferson County. I remember my mother being angry over one <laughs> Bible Club, Key Club, and Powder Puff. She has served as the girls' golf president, and she was a golf district qualifier. She has also been named to the honor roll. Outside of school, Catherine works at Grand Home Drums. She also tutors and babysits. In her free time, she enjoys cooking, baking, kayaking, bike riding, and golfing. Volleyball, band, choir, treble choir, show choir, select ensemble, tri-m, and jazz band. She has been named Student of the Month and participated in the PMEA All-State Concert Band and Choir, the PMEA District Jazz Band, the NAFME All-East and Treble Choir. She is also a member of the National Honor Society. Outside of school, Kylie plays at the IUP University of In her free time, she enjoys spending time with family, making music, is the daughter of doctors Erica and Steve Gribble. Throughout high school, Danielle has been involved in volleyball, basketball, and track and field. Earlier this volleyball season, Danielle recorded her 1500 set assist, becoming only the second volleyball player in school history to achieve the, this accomplishment. In addition to athletics, Danielle is also involved in choir, select ensemble, treble choir, show choir, musical theater, student ambassadors, powder puff, powder buff, and varsity club. She has served as captain of the volleyball and basketball teams, treasurer of the volleyball and track teams, vice president of Tri-M, and president of choir and musical theater. She has been named the National Honor Society, BMEA District and Region Choir, and WJACTV Scholar Athlete of the Week. She is also a three-time letter winner in volleyball, basketball, and track and field. Outside of school, Danielle has volunteered for Miles for Smiles, SSCD, Knights of Columbus Breakfast, SSCD, Lawn Festival, Big Run Memorial Gym Renovation, Little League Concession Stand, and the Father Daughter Games. In her free time, she enjoys reading, hunting, gardening, and hanging out with friends and family. Danielle's future plans include attending a four year college to major in animal and nutritional science to become a veterinarian. Her escort is Anthony Danielle Gribble. Connie is the daughter of Nathan and Christian, Christian Miller. Throughout high school, Natalie has been involved in chorus, select ensemble, treble choir, student council, Bible club, art club, ski club, powder puff, and powder buff. She currently serves as the choir librarian. She has been inducted into the Tri-M Music Honor Society, participated in district and region chorus, and is a high honor student. Outside of school, Natalie tutors, is an AJ Paris varsity cheer coach, and a volunteer for the Starlight Night Prom at the Summit Church. She has also danced for 15 years and is currently dancing at the Sue Hewitt Dance Studio in Vienna. She, per she performed at the 2021 Thanksgiving Day Parade for one of the 600 dancers chosen nationwide. In her free time, she enjoys hanging out with friends and family, four-wheeler riding, and skiing. Natalie's future plans include to attend Slippery Rock University to major in fine art and dance with a concentration of performance and choreography. Parada. A punk is the daughter of Critter and Kelly Parada. 
high school, Rachel has been involved in tennis, ag club, art club, bible club, chorus, key club, future health services club, foreign language club, future first responders club, NJHS, NHS, science club, ski club, powder club, and student council. She has served as the treasurer of FFRC, treasurer of NJHS,
Got it. And that was peanut butter, man. That shit was good. Oh, I know. It was. Oh, man. I got two left, too. They didn't. Yeah, I'm taking them home. <laughs> All season tires. And get your trailer and garden tractor tires replaced before you need them. And take advantage of rebate. We mean rebate season at HPS Tire in Punxsy. Hey, welcome back. Uh, finishing up these cupcakes there. Uh, we, still, we, we still have four left. We're not, you know. As of now, we do anyway. So, well, for any bakers out there, hey, that peanut butter chocolate—just the simple, the simple cupcake doesn't have to be fancy. Well, we'll try anything up here. We'll try anything. I'll tell you, uh, uh, years ago, when the Ishman boys used to play, Robin Ishman made uh, chocolate chip cookies. Okay, and uh, it got to be like a routine. Like I would go down, and they would have their little tailgate thing. And she would always leave me a, a little bought bag of those. Oh, yeah. And yeah. that was, uh, and I honestly didn't share those. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's funny when you get those things that, you know, the people make and everything. Yeah. You know, they, uh, Seth Speck, when he wrestled for me, his mom made us uh, these uh, gob cupcakes. They were, they had filling yeah. in them. And uh, the kids used to fight over those, but. You know, there's only limited kids that could eat them. Right, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. The heavyweights, <laughs> yeah. the heavyweights, and whoever didn't have to make weight. Uh, and the coaches. Well, I mean, <laughs> again, obviously, obviously have, I ate a lot of those. You cupcakes. have to try them. It's for safety. Yeah, I mean, right. I mean, that's what it's about. So, Eric, what a uh, honestly, really a crazy first half. I mean, we saw a personal penalty. Yeah. We saw a kick return. We saw two runs around 50 yards. Yeah. We saw a, a just a crazy pass to get scores a touchdown. And there's been a lot of happening here in that first half, and it's, you know, and it's the scores indicated that, 21-14. Right. Uh, the thing is, though, I mean, we have to keep, uh, like, I, like, I have to believe that if we're not ahead by three, uh, because Kelly, his extra points, his extra points aren't just making it. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna be a guy that can probably kick forty yarders if needed. Yeah, uh, so uh, we need to uh, we need to stop this first drive. I mean, I talk about it all the time. We talk about it all the time, and it sounds, you know, it sounds cliche, I guess. But this first drive of the half, if you come out and stop them, you steal that momentum. You know, yeah. We took it into the. We, we came down. We scored. We took the seven point lead with that beautiful, that beautiful slant pass to Press Lloyd in, in the end zone uh, to make up for the missed extra point. You know, so we're right back on track, and you know they were willing to let the clock run out in the second half in the second quarter. Yes, they were willing to let the clock run out because they knew they got the ball first in this second half, and. You know, I know lots of people disagree with me or whatever. In high school football, if you're not kicking the ball into the end zone, kick it out of bounds. Kick a hard liner down the middle, make it bounce. Maybe they fumble it, but you hang them up in the air and they're fielding them around the 20 or 25 yard line. That's a hard. That's a hard kick to cover. Right. Oh yeah. And you know, so keep it safe. Give them the ball to 35. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to kick it towards the sideline. Maybe it spins and stays in. And uh, you have somebody that can run down there and fall on it. But just hanging them up, just hanging them up in the middle of the field, uh, kind of there in no man's land. Got the uh, come scores here from D9. Uh, Brookville uh, leading Bradford 21 to nothing there in the second quarter. Brockway uh, in a tight game with Keystone, 21-13 at the half. Brockway leading that game. Central Clarion fifty six nothing over Montauk at the half. Yeah, Central Clarion's okay. Yeah, Bald Eagle area. This is a big one for us. Uh, ahead of Clearfield seven uh, nothing. That should be a really good game. Bald Eagle's undefeated. Clearfield with one loss, I believe. Uh, that's in the second quarter. So that's a that's a big game for our Triple A District nine. Uh, Cowdersport fourteen. Otto Eldridge seven. Good game there. Dubois St. Mary's seven seven at the half. <clears throat> Another good football game. Uh, Smithport Ridgeway, another good one, 7-6 late in the first quarter there, the last scores on that. So some good games around tonight, and here was another one. 
as the Chucks lead 21-14. Uh, they will kick off. We will kick off to Carn City. So uh, it's going to be a good, we need a nice defensive hold here. We've been doing pretty good on a defensive end. Yeah. Uh, so just, just stop the big play. Yeah, negate a couple of those big plays, and, and we should be fine here. Uh, they don't, it doesn't look, and I'm not saying this, it's, they don't have a. They don't look like they have a real solid pass game, so no. they're going to run the football. No, I mean in the one completion, the one completion they do have, Moore was inches away from right. Yes, returning it for six. I mean, so it, it's just a matter here of of stopping that big play. Don't allow a big return here. You know those are those are backbreakers. You know big returns, things like that. So. As Grusky will get set to kick off, we'll get set to start our third quarter, brought to you by HPS Tire. And that was, uh, thanks for tuning in to our Punks and McDonald's halftime show. As Braden Slater will be back deep for Carn City as Grusky kicks off. It's a little line drive kick. It'll be taken at the 18-yard line by one of the up guys. And nice, nice job coverage. there. And see who comes out of the bottom of that pile. That is... Anthony Gould, and they have the ball at the 33 or 34 yard line, and you know yeah, again mark it up to 33 for Carn City. So good job by the Chucks there, as that was uh, carrying that ball. That was Owen Kaufman, number 24 for Carn City. As Cole Johnston will go under center. Double wing look here for Carn City right up the middle. Nope. Right, he Johnston keeps it. Keeps it. Comes to the outside. He'll get some positive yardage Ooh. as he's brought down by Rutan get. and Weaver. Picks up about six to the 39-yard line. Second down and four. And I'm going to say Carn City is going to control this ball. They're going to try to run. They're going to try to run every play, I think. Yeah. You know, they're going to try to take as much time off as they can. That's their game. Yeah, and they and as they'll go shotgun. Boy, he looked like he left early. As Kramer keeps it, and then the Chucks nice do tackle. a great job there. They held Kramer to one, I think. I'm trying to see who yep. comes out of the bottom of that pile. That was Logan Moore actually got the ankles, and I think Martz helped them finish it up. But... They'll mark them. Nah, they're going to say no gain. Ball still stays at the 39. So third down and four. <clears throat> so 10.45 running clock here in the third quarter. Again, third quarter is brought to you by HPS Tire. Under center is Johnston. And right up the middle is Kramer. Oh, oh, oh. Kramer and he is hit a yard short as... I believe, no, Weaver with a big hit. Somebody was holding there. It's fourth and, boy, a half a yard. And I think Carn City might go for it from oh, there. Oh, they're definitely going. I mean, Kramer. Fourth and a pretty close to a full <laughs> yard. Kramer's basically a guarantee for one. You know you what I mean? Think. Like that's I mean, they've held him a couple <sighs> times. When, he, when they try to get him outside, we're able to stretch it out. You know, we'll see where... Uh, Third one, Johnson under center. And it they, is there, and they're going to stop it again. Short. That is Landon Martz busting through there. And a big play by huge, Martz. Huge play by Martz. And it's a turnover on downs in Punxsy territory at the 41-yard line. So Punxsy with good field position here to start their first possession, and that's exactly what the defense needed. That's, uh, that was the second time. Martz had that big sack. He blew up a play earlier, too. Twins at a far side for the Chucks. Hetrick will go shotgun with Martz to his left and back to pass. Has time. Now he rolls out of there. Hetrick has some room to the far side. He'll take off. He'll get plenty. He'll stay on his feet. And he'll be wrestled down <laughs> inside the 20 at about the 17-yard line. 24-yard run for him. So big play by Matto Hetrick. Well, and what, he'll be marked at the 17, first and 10. What I'll say is they respect his throwing. 
So when he starts to roll out, they freeze when he pulls the ball down. Any anytime he anytime he even stutters his feet, he freezes the defense. Same formation, twins to this side. Back to pass again. And it's, that's Thomas on that little drag route, and he's going to be into the end zone. Oh. Touchdown, 17 yards this time. The exact same play they won, uh, they got the score on last time. A little easier throw, but it was the same play, and it's a 17-yard touchdown. Hetrick to Thomas, second time. That connection, and uh, Meadows having a night. As Griffin White will attempt the extra point with Copenhaver holding. Snap holds good, kick up. This and one is good. good. Right down the middle. 28 to 14. The Chucks lead. 9-14 to go here in the third quarter. We'll take a 30-second break. You're listening to a Laurel Eye Clinic Jefferson County High School Sports Night right here on the Groundhog. Now a message from HPS Tire and Function. It's way base season and your tires are shot. Don't be a silly wabbit. Get down to HPS Tires and save with our rebate. Uh. That important message was from Elmer. I mean Brian at HPS Tire. Reminding you it's time to get those worn out tires replaced with some all season tires. And get your trailer and garden tractor tires replaced before you need them. And take advantage of rebate. We mean rebate season at HPS Tire in Punxsy. Uh. Welcome back. So the Chucks just two plays after stopping uh, Carn City on a fourth down in their own territory. So from the 41, two plays. Big run by Hetrick and then a 17-yard pass. Hetrick to Thomas. And the extra point was good. 28-14, Chucks lead. 9-14 to go here in the third quarter. And Grusky will get set to kick off once again. See where he takes this one here as straightforward and kick, and this will be place. taken. And yep, that is. Oh, there's a big oh, block in the back again. This time he tries to get out front, makes a couple guys hmm. miss, and he'll get to the 42-yard line. I think Brought that was there by, I believe, uh, Griffin White and Manners. I think that was, I think it was Manners actually that got blocked in the back too. 9.06 here to go. That's and just a Carson will start at their 42, first and 10. Twin receivers each side for the Gremlins, trailing our trucks 28 to 14. Johnston hands off the share right up the middle. He picks up yardage. He'll oh, get he got seven or eight as he gets near midfield. Okay, now brought down there by. Nesbitt comes up a little limp, but looks to be okay as Knopf will check in for him. Ball is at the 49, so seven-yard gain. Second and three. Now, this is a drive here where, like, you answer this one, you deflate them a little bit more. Yep, yep. You know, seven points, you're always in it. But if you can stop them here, they're a little more deflated. Johnston hands off to Kramer. Kramer gets to the outside. Now he'll cuts up in. He'll get the first down and more. Brought down by Weaver and Thomas. Five yards for Kramer there. Gets to the 46 of the Chucks. First and 10. 8.20 to go here. Running clock. Brought to you by, uh, excuse me, the third quarter brought to you by HPS Tire. Not the running clock. How do we have a running clock sponsor? I talked to Lenny about that, Eric. We, you know. <laughs> Twin receivers far side, single receiver this way. Johnston rolls to the far side. Has some room. Now he'll just take off and gets positive yardage. Oh, just, man. What's, that looked like a, uh, yeah, they need a, a flag hit. there. Somebody had marks by the face mask. And two-yard gain gets it to the 44-yard line. Second down eight, Johnston on that keeper. Really, I think that was just a design run because I didn't see anybody on that side of the field open or really even out there. Trying, yeah. yeah, I think it was just a design quarterback run. <clears throat> Second down and eight for the Gremlins. Twins receivers to this side. That's Kramer up the middle. And nice run. We'll get to the 40-yard line and bring up third down. Kramer, the ball 
Looks like Anthony Gould, Aiden Schaefer there. <clears throat> Third down and four, ball at the 40-yard line. Clock under seven minutes right now. Here in this third quarter, again, the Chucks leading by 14, 28 to 14. I think this is going to be a... And swing pass to Cher, and Nick Wesneski is all over that one. And it'll be a loss of two or three, and now the flags are going to fly, and we're going to get a penalty on Chucks, I believe. Yeah, we're going to have tackled him out of bounds. I'm going to say that's it unless something happened over in that sideline. No, we're hanging our heads, so. And that was a beautiful play. Blew it up, pushed him out of bounds, fourth down. And it's going to be on Chuck, so 15-yard penalty after the play. So it's a loss of, that, that's, it's going to be a loss of three. Looks to be back to the 42, but then it's going to be a 15-yard penalty from there. So it'll be first and 10 for the Gremlins at the 20, eh, they're going to say the 28. Is that what it looks like, Eric? Yep, 28-yard yeah, yeah. line. That would have been fourth and eight. Or fourth and, uh, <sighs> 6 39 to go here, clock stopped. It would have been fourth or seven and eight. You don't tackle them in their bench. Cher gets positive yardage inside the 25 to about the 24 as... I believe Bo Thomas with the tackle. Second down and five after that, or second down and six after a four yard gain. Ball down to the 24 yard line. Power eye look for the Gremlins. Pitch, Kramer, he'll lead, follow those guys. And it'll be close to first down depending oh, on yeah. the spot. Let me see who's coming out of there. Aiden Schaefer with the thing. And it's going to be, I think, third and one. Looks to be just short. Ball at the 19-yard line. Needs to get to the 18. Third down and one. Clock under 5.40 to go here in the third quarter. Third quarter brought to you by HPS Tire. Again, the Chucks leading 28-14. to 14. Four down territory, I'm sure, here for the Gremlins. As they go power out. And, and they the just have to move. the jump. Huh. And it'll be, I believe, the defense, just to make sure. Nah, it's definitely the defense. As five-yard penalty on the Chucks will be a first and ten for the Gremlins. As the ball goes down to the 14-yard line. And now they'll bring out, they had their big package in. Now they're going to bring in some receivers. As even uh, Luke Kramer, the big running back, number four for Carnes City, is going to get a break. Well, Johnston will go shotgun with Scherer next to him. Scherer will get it, and he will go nowhere as it's stacked up there by, I believe, Nesbitt. Yep, Mason Nesbitt with the first stop and then got some help. 14, no gains, second down, 10. And now the big guys come back in. Four forty to go here, running clock in this third quarter. It's second and ten for the Gremlins at the Chucks fourteen. Johnston taken by Kramer. Nowhere to go, and he'll fall forward, get back, get back to the line, line of scrimmage. scrimmage. I'm going to give Anthony Gould the beginning of that and then Nesbitt helping out, but I think Anthony Gould got the trip. And it's going to be third down. Actually, almost, actually going to come a loss, loss of one. Yeah. So back to the 15-yard line. As we'll go under four minutes on this play, as this is quick-moving third quarter. And they don't, they don't have to get it all here. This is four down territory. Oh, yeah, they're definitely four down territory. The Chucks need two big stops. Kramer, they faked a pitch, and they'll go with the thing. Beautiful nice job tackle. there. That is Landon Martz doing his job right there. As they tried to fake it to Braden Slater, 
Martz was right there. He didn't fall for the fake. And it's a no gain. Brings out fourth down 11. That is a huge play there for the Chucks defense. That, I mean, Martz, has, Martz has had a lot of big plays tonight on defense. Yes, that, uh, was, that was a very good play. As another chance. The Chucks have stopped them twice now on fourth downs. They've turned it uh, over on downs twice. Can we do it a third time? It's fourth down 11, ball to 15. In motion is Kramer, and they moved, and that's going to make it fourth and 16. That makes it a, those five yards are huge. So that makes it, that changes your whole play call right now back yeah. to the 20 yard line. Well, now the thing is, is a, as a secondary, you can keep them in front of you. Yeah. You can keep them in front of you, just make a short tackle. As Kramer will check out, they're going to bring their more receivers in here as it's a fourth and 16. Ball at the 20. Let's go, Chucks. Two receivers far side. Johnston back to pass. Has plenty of time. Steps up and is going to be brought down at the 20. Grosky and I'm going to see the first guy coming out of there. Aiden Schaefer. Aiden Schaefer's having a nice game. And that was a 10-play drive, turned over on downs once again, back to the Chucks at the 20, first and 10, with 2.42 to go here to, in the uh, third quarter. Aiden Schaefer's having a real nice game. He is. <clears throat> Chucks huddle it up, or hurry it up to the line, under center is Hetrick. Twin receivers at the far side, handoff Martz. He jumps over the line, and he'll get four. <clears throat> To about the 24-yard line, second down six. Patrick Hustle over to get the play call. And Punksy may even start to slow things down just a little bit here. As it's uh, second down and six from the 24. Beautiful night here in Punxsy, Eric. Boy, it, it didn't look it today, but it is beautiful out there. Yeah. Field's holding up nice. I know Mike was worried about it today after all the rain. Hetrick has time. He has a man. It's Weaver, and it's a big gain up to the 47-yard line. 23 yards. As no Weaver found the room over here on this. And they're just running these flood patterns, Eric, where they're bringing a short, a medium, and a long guy all to the sidelines. Well, when you and they got to decide who they're going to cover. On, on those pass plays, our three receivers are, are, are sure-handed. Yes. So if we can get one of them open, you just need one and, of them and, open. And most times, somebody's going to be open. You just have to get the right one. As Mark oh. will take it at the 49 or 8, uh, we'll mark them, I believe, at the 48. So we're in gremlin five territory. Yards. Second down in five. Boy, if they hadn't gotten Mart's ankle, he was going to bust out for a big one. Mart will check out. As they'll go with a heavy package. As Thomas is the, <laughs> is the eye back now. I was going to say, they didn't have Griffin in there, so I figured Bo would be the eye back, and he's going to take it to the house. Same play. They just ran the exact same play, <laughs> and it goes to the 35-yard line. That was the yard. same play. And, uh, again, opening up, there, they're going right over Grosky over there. In that well, that's a, good, that's a good place to run. Yeah, and it's a first down, first and 10 at the 35. Under a minute to go here in this third quarter, doing exactly what they need to do, move the football and run time up 28-14. to 14. Punksy seems to start, they're starting to be in control of this game. Yeah. Like, really in control of the game. Yeah, it's starting to look that way. As it'll go to Thomas again, he'll bust up through there. Bo Thomas, and he's going to go 35 yards. Touchdown, Bo Thomas. 35-yard touchdown run. And just like that, the Chucks make it 34-14. Well, I mean, and so far, I mean, you know, we've got a couple couple options here for the sweet play of the half already. Yeah, uh, the 17-yard the, uh, uh, touchdown pass and the 
35 yard touchdown run right there. Copenhaver hold, Griffin White up, and, and that's good. good. 35 14 to Chuck's lead, 23 seconds left to go in the third quarter. We'll take a uh, 30 second break and listen to a Laurel Eye Clinic Jefferson County High School sports night right here on the Groundhog. Jenny Martin Roster says, Let's go, Chuck. Have you been to Jenny Mart? Jenny Martin Roster is a fantastic thrift store, literally filled floor to ceiling with treasures. Always organized and always clean. Like and follow Jenny Mart on Facebook. Open 9 to 5, Monday through Saturday, closed on Sundays. This store is a gem you have to see. Lily's Restaurant and Bakery wishes everyone involved in this year's Funky Chuck football game to have a great season. Your hard work will show in the results. If you need something for the sweet tooth or just a great homemade meal, Lily's Restaurant and Bakery is here for everyone. Go Chuck! Welcome back to Chuck's Five Play Drive. On the uh, Route 310 Lawn and Garden scoring drive summary, uh, starting after 20, Bo Thomas, 35-yard touchdown run. His third touchdown of the evening, two passing. That's his first rushing touchdown. Uh, extra point was good, 35-14. Chuck's lead here with 23 seconds remaining in the third quarter. That was uh, your scoring drive summary by Route 310 Lawn and Garden. And I don't know what happens on that. Well, uh, they didn't call. They didn't blow it in, uh, blow the whistle to, to put the ball in play. So they were okay there. As Gruski will reset, and now he'll kick. There's what I like to see. Oh, that's hits. that's uh, what I want to see. Ball checked up to 25. This is Kaufman again, and he'll get to the 40. Now he was still able to return it. Anthony Gold uh, with the tackle. Gold's Gold's having a game on special teams. I think I think he's made every tackle. Oh, 16 seconds remaining here. Carnsey's going to have to get up a little bit here. 35-14, yeah, but I don't. I don't know that they're built for this. Yes. Yeah, I don't know that they're built for this. I mean, if they come out and hand the ball off right here, they're conceding the game. As Johnston will be in the shotgun. Two receivers each side. He looks to pass into the flat. It's incomplete, and that was intended for. Uh, Kaufman, Owen Kaufman, second down and 10 for the Gremlins. Stay tuned for our uh, post-game show after the fourth quarter, brought to you by InFirst Bank. Final stats. And we'll also have the Gary Garzoni player of the game, brought to you by Jefferson Machine. And it, it's looking right now, it's probably going to be as somebody that's won already, just the way it's looking. As Johnson's being chased down, hits a little screen to share. Well read, nice job there by Mason Nesbitt. That was real nice. As he, he picks up two or three, but very nice job of just staying in your staying in your lane, knowing your uh, your place there, and, and did a nice job as that quarter ends. We'll take a one minute break. It's a Chucks 35, Carn City 14 as we get set for the fourth quarter. You're listening to a Laurel Eye Clinic Jefferson County High School Sports Night right here on the Groundhog. The Punxsutawney Area Hospital has been serving the community region for more than 135 years, taking care of generations of women. I'm Dr. Brian Doverspike, board certified obstetrician at the Punxsutawney Area Hospital. I, along with other members of the obstetrics and gynecology team, Dr. Michael Stever and nurse practitioners Candy Knox and Amanda Greenblatt, are here to help with all aspects of women's care during all stages of life. From routine OBGYN care to prenatal and healthy beginnings, our team is dedicated to serving women in the community with planning a family, diagnostic testing, treatment plans, and many other areas. Our office is conveniently located at the Punxsutawney campus in Suite 2200. For more information about the services available, please call our office at 814-938-3343 or visit us on the web at pah.org. We look forward to providing you with a seamless and personal health care experience. Leslie Malberg and the gang wants to wish Chucks a great season. You're in good hands with Allstate. Leslie Malberg of Brooksville wants you to know she's here to help. Give her a call, 814-715-7319. Have her call your home or auto insurance today. Well, welcome back as we start the fourth quarter, and I'm, I, I don't even know how the, uh, the young man caught that football. Uh, number 88, Shane Peters, the tight end, uh, the big tight end for Carn City, who's finally getting involved in the game. He, he caught that pass at the Chucks 47. Mart and 
Uh, I believe, I, I think it was Logan Moore. They were all over him, and he caught that football. Yeah. And that's kind of the first and 10 at the Chucks 47. As Kramer will take the handoff, he will get positive yards as he's hauled down there by. Uh, Somebody's down for the Gremlins in the backfield. Thomas with the tackle, I believe. Ball up to the 41, so six-yard gain. Second down and four. Yeah, whoever it was got off the field. So we're in our fourth quarter, brought to you by Jenny Mart. Yeah, I mean... In As the twin receivers are far side, single receiver this side for Carnese. Johnston, nowhere to go. Wisniewski is... Going to get the sack. Nick Wazeski comes around the end and gets the two or three yard loss on the play. Back to the 43, so loss of two. Makes it a third down and short six, long five. However you want to call it, Eric. I mean, your stats are so on. I hate to, you know, mislead My, you. Well, hey, I knew uh, last week. I said I thought we held Dubois under 100, and we did 92 yards. And Come on! As they get a free five yards, defensive yeah. offsides makes it third and short now. Be third down and one. Unbelievable! From the 30. Thirty-seven and a half yard line, so third and just under one, and it's Kramer, I believe. And he'll the, and get, and he'll, oh, oh, we're gonna have to have a face mask. Yeah, his helmet just we have a helmet. We have, we're holding a helmet. Mason so. Nesbitt's holding the helmet that rolled to him, but Kramer's gonna pick up three to the thirty-five, and then. Uh, We'll see what the penalty is. So it's a three-yard gain. It's going to be a first down unless it's a penalty on. Face mask it's on the chucks. Yep. It's going to be a personal foul. That's 15 yards, so they're yep. going to have it all the way down to the 20-yard line. Now, that's 15 yards. Let's see where they get this mark to. <laughs> it's a 35. It's, he should just walk to the 20 and set yeah, it there. Yeah, set it down. Yeah, don't don't count. Just walk down and set it on the 20. And that's on hey, the 20. All right. So. So first and 10, and 10-11 to go here in this uh, final quarter of the game. Chuck's leading 35-14, to 14, but Carn City on the move here as they have it first and 10 from the 20. As they run a little counter, and it worked. Noah nice. Weaver makes a tackle. He gets about eight. Let me see. That was uh, Hunter Scherer with the tackle. And Anthony Gould a little bit slow getting up, but he will. As second down, Anthony Gold, uh, the Prentice escort. Yeah. You know, Aiden Schaefer having a great game. Yeah, he yeah. was the queen escort, so I yeah. don't know what it is. Yeah, I'm just. Maybe if you're, be the escort, I guess. <laughs> yeah, find, find a <laughs> second down and two for the Gremlins at the 12. Right up the middle. Oh, and nowhere. nice stop there. The Chucks just blew that up in the middle. And I think Grusky. Or Schaefer got that blown up, and then just a pile of guys. But that was a loss of about two back to the 13-yard line. So third down and three. Under nine minutes to go here in this final quarter. Fourth quarter brought to you by Jenny Mart. As Carn City, again, they're just, they're not a hurry up. This is, you know, they're going to play their game. They're going to do what they need to do. Uh, you know, mixing the guys in and out. Looks like they're going to go to a little bit smaller package here. Now the Kramer's still in there, and they're going to actually go to power eye. And it's going to be a pitch to share. He's going to follow Kramer. He's going to get the first down and more. Stays on his feet, and he'll go out of bounds just short of the end zone. He's now they're call marking him back around the four-yard four line or so. Nevertheless, it's a first down. And let's uh, see where they the three. 
see where they do spot them. Uh, it looks like it'd be at the five, the where where this the uh, mid official is. Ah. Yep, first and goal at the five. So, right, actually just at the nose of the five. So, good solid run for Share. Again, power eye look. Johnston under center. A share again. Tries to get to the outside and oh, chase nice down tackle. to three. And that was, I believe, Zach Presloid, I nice think. Nice tackle. I think you're correct. Who come out of there. A little bit of fog going on here tonight. It's, yeah, it's kind of a neat looking front scene. Of them. Looks like they're running the smoke machine yeah. down there. <laughs> so it's kind of hard to see that far uh, view there. Sorry, Eric, I'm going to open the window so I can see a little bit. So, ball at the four. So, one yard gain, first and goal, or second and goal from the four. Quick hitter up the middle, and that's going to go nowhere. Again, that's Thomas and Grusky like or Martz. No gain. Third and goal from the four. Man, this, this Chuck's defense has re does oh. really stiffen up that middle. You know, they haven't given up no, too two much big of plays. Those. Yeah. Two big plays is all they two that that first big run play, fifty eight yards up the middle. And they've certainly settled down since then. And timeout now taken by Carn City. I mean I can be completely honest. This is not the this is not the score I expected in this game. Yeah. I mean I thought it was gonna be I thought it was gonna be uh you know, we were, you know, 21 20, something like that. So 35 14. We'll stay here as Carn City <coughs> took a timeout. 7 3 to go in the game. Uh, Punksy out in front, 35 14. Carn City has the ball, third and goal from the four. But that pit, uh, Punksy defensive line has just stiffened up when they've gotten down here. We've stopped them on downs three different times. Uh, twice already in the second half and a big stop in the uh, first half down at the one yard line so uh, we'll be back in the road next week Where are heading, we next heading week? to Montauk down there to take on the Warriors and then uh, our next home game will actually be Brookville that'll be uh, that should be senior night that'll be another game just like Dubois and <laughs> yep. what I expected tonight yep. I mean yeah, Brookville's been coming on. So, here we go. Third down and goal for the Gremlins at the four. Johnston, he'll roll out from the shotgun. Looks, looks, looks. Flags are flying. That's got to be, gotta be, be a, a hold or an illegal shift. I'm going to say an illegal shift, I think. And their coach is going to come out. Oh. Yeah, it's a false start, so... Anytime it comes out that, and I'll tell you what, that official threw that flag <laughs> in the air. Like, I was like, wow, that is way up there. So that's going to be a five-yard penalty. As I think the play went for no gain. Oh! And now we're going to get we're gonna, Yeah, now we're going to have an unsportsmanlike. That one's on the coach. So we're going to get a five-yard penalty and then another 15, I think, how that works. Well, I mean, it should be. So, it's going to be, f I don't think there was any gain on the play. Well, the play stopped because it was a false start. Well, yeah, but it was an incomplete pass. So, I think they can decline that, that fall the and then take the after the play, the 15, so it'll be fourth down and whenever, 20. I'm thinking that's what can happen here. So, let's see. I saw Nickel, Coach Nickel talking. So, the false start, false start is going to be declined. declined. Yep. So, after the play, unsportsmanlike. On Carn City. Yep, that'll make it fourth down. So that's a good call by the coaching staff to decline that penalty. But after the play was the unsportsmanlike. So it's fourth down and goal for the 19. And Carn City trailing 35-14 with 6.57 to go to the game. We'll certainly go and for it. This is one. This is one. The secondary. If the ball's in the air, just keep the ball. Keep the player in front of you out of the end zone. Yep. And. Uh,
And I'm not sure if that was on a coach or a player. I'm not because the officials uh, were talking to him there, so I'm not sure. I know the coach over there wasn't real happy about something. So Johnson will be in a shotgun. He's got twin receivers each side. Back to pass. Has to chase. Oh, him. has room. Now right. he's got room in that far corner, and he will get, get into, into the, the end zone. zone. What a run by. Cole Johnston, he laid a hit a on fourth somebody. Fourth and goal from the 19, and he goes 19 yards for the touchdown. That was a great run by that quarterback right there, and he took a lick at about the three and kept going. You know, he, he delivered a lick. Yeah, that one's one that shouldn't have happened. I mean, that's a... So it makes it 35-20 with the extra point here underway. And this is a new kicker, Slater, as his kick is up. And I believe it's good. Yeah, I think it so. It is good. So 35-21 with 6.47 to go. You're listening to Laurel Eye Clinic. We'll take a 30-second break, Jimmy. Laurel Eye Clinic, Jefferson County High School Sports Night right here on the Groundhog. Go do it yourself. Napa Midtown Auto Parts. Open 7.30 to 6, Monday through Friday, and Saturday, 8 to 3. Find us at 110 South Gilpin Street, Punxy. Search Napa Midtown Auto Parts on Facebook. Call 938-6363. That's Napa Midtown Auto Parts. Your Punxy shopping save is wishing the Chuck football team, marching band, and cheerleaders the best of luck this year. Give it your all and have fun doing it. And you can always count on Punxy shopping save to have all your needs for game day. Go Chucks! Welcome back, DJ and Eric with you. 12 uh, play drive and on a fourth and goal from the 19 after a 15 yard penalty. Cole Johnston back to pass was being rushed pretty heavy, found a gap in the middle and just took off and was able to score. The extra point was good, made it 35 21 uh, in favor of our Chucks here with 6.47 to go. That was your route 310 Lawn and Garden scoring drive summary, and we did have an injured gremlin down there and he's able to get off and uh, walk off for his own power so just a second behind the kickoff reminder uh, uh, it's homecoming uh, we want to congratulate uh, Catherine uh, Crago as the 2023 fall sports queen and Danielle Gribble as the princess so congratulations to those two young ladies and again congratulations to all six of those ladies being uh, selected by their peers. So the Chucks will get set to receive the kickoff. I would expect, uh, they're going to expect some on side. They're moving some guys up. Oh, yeah, I would definitely have the uh, hands team you got up Griffin, there. You got Griffin White back deep at the 20. You got everybody else is coming up. In fact, the furthest guy back other than Griffin White's going to be mm, guys at the 45. So this is complete. Looking for the uh, onside here. So Slater gets set to kick off as he will go ahead and kick it to Griffin White and let it go oh, in the end zone. It actually goes in the end zone. I'll tell you what, if he was able to cut that corner and keep it in bounds around the five or so, that would because they hustled down there. Yeah, they did. So Which I think was probably the plan. Yeah. Punksy was. We'll start after 20 with 6:47 to go here in the fourth. Brought to you by Jenny Mart, leading 35-21. Nice sustained drive here would yeah. be the the key. Take time off. More more about taking time off now yeah. than anything. Yep, yeah, they got to score twice. They got to score two touchdowns and a and a two point conversion to win this. So sustained drive. At least get it up around midfield if you have to punt the ball. Try to pin them deep. As Hetrick will bring them out of the huddle. Be twin receivers this side. Under center. And it is March. Bo, Thomas Bo Thomas for four yards up to the 24. As Mart's caught a breather, now he'll check back in. Second down, six. Hetrick comes the whole way over, gets the play. Now he'll hustle back over. Plenty of time. 
In fact, I'd be running these down to yeah. at least 10. Yeah, run them down. 6-10 to go here in the running clock in this final quarter. Run 40 seconds off with every play. Down to 10. Now they'll break the huddle. Hustle up to the line. And it'll hand off to Martz. Martz will dive forward. He'll get to the 26. Give him a couple more. It'll be third and four. This is a, this is a per, this is a important first down right here, Eric. It I mean, is. There's still 5:45 to go. And, and, now they're going to run, you know, 30 seconds off this clock. Well, but. the thing is, like you know, you're going out here and you got a 14 point lead, but you can't go uber conservative, right? You know, and, and that's, you know, you can't. These guys aren't going to concede the game. You know, they came out, uh, they passed the ball on that last drive. I mean, they did the things they needed to do. So. Presley goes in motion. Hetrick will let him stop. Hands, nope, fakes to March. Looks down the middle. Nowhere there. Maddow rolls out. Has a man open. It's Mo Thomas. For the first oh, oh, my. <coughs> and he'll get out of bounds at about the 38. And 39-yard line, first and 10. yard gain. Clock does stop as he goes out of bounds, but more importantly, it's a new set of downs for the Chucks. First and 10 at the 39. Maddo and, Maddo and Bo are having a big game. Yes, they're, they're having a big game in combination here tonight. Under center once again, Thomas. We're near the five-minute mark of the game. He'll hand off. It's Thomas again. He'll try to bust it outside, and he'll be wrapped up, and he'll get about six or seven. To the 46 or 7, we'll call it the 46-yard line. So 7 yards will bring up 2nd down and 3. As, again, the Chuck's up 14, 35 to 21. And as, as the running game's going here, and, and Hetrick with, his, with the, his arm tonight, Really, another first down or so as they're taking the time off. Should keep things rolling. Thomas again. Up the middle, we have the first down as he crosses the 50 into uh, Gremlin territory at the 48. Another six yards. First and 10 for the Chucks. And we'll go under four minutes before this play's run as Thomas will check out for Martz. So far, the Chucks are doing a real nice job on this drive. Yeah, just, you know, they're running their bread and butter. They're not doing anything different. They're just, you know, the, the got lines open up the holes. Hetrick scrambling out. The guys are staying open as they'll hand off to Martz. Martz will run up. He'll bust oh, through get another nice five run. yards or so. As he'll get across the 45 to about the 43. Call it second down and five. Again, now down to 320. It'll be under three minutes before this play's run. They're doing a nice job of clock control here. Yes. Nice job of clock management. Keeping the ball, keeping in the middle of the field, keep the clock running, not getting out of bounds. Uh, twin side to side. It's Martz again. Martz will have the first. Oh, and he the ball. As it'll be the Gremlins still on the ground. Who's going to get it? Hattrick. As it'll be Carn no. City. Out of bounds. Nope. They're going to call it. They're going to give it to Carn City. Uh -huh. They are. Uh, he must have got it just as he went out. As Carn City, yeah, they're, well, they're, gonna, they're arguing the call right now. They're going to discuss things. As the official going to look, they're going to think Coach Nichols like he was out of bounds. Yeah, his feet were, out, but his feet were, his whole lower body was out of bounds, right in front of. Uh, so I mean, it should be the Chuck's ball right there, and we're going to see, and we're going to call. Make the call as well. They're they're placating. They're they're talking, so they're going to give the ball to the Gremlins. And it looks like it will be the Gremlins ball, I think. And I'm 
pretty sure it is. No, Hetrick's still on the field. It's going to be the Chucks. So Punksy will keep it. That's the right call. Back to the 46-yard line. Third down and seven. So it's actually a loss of four. As Thomas almost, he almost lost it and fell forward. It's going to be fourth down to the 41. And there's an injured gremlin yeah, down, and the clock will stop at 2.41. Thomas hit somebody hard running through there. As there's an injured gremlin, he's going to try to get up on his own, and he will be able to go off. That's uh, Slater as he's able to hobble off. It's going to bring up fourth down, and uh, we got a punt from this area from the 41, even though it's fourth yeah. and three. But, you know, you're up 35-21. There's only 241 left in yeah. this game. you got to be punting here. Yep. Yep, your defense. Uh, Man, it looks like we're going to stay on the ground. We're going to stay on the field. We're going to try yeah. to finish this off. First down, first down finishes pretty much the game, out of the game. But uh, you got Manners. He's a, you, you've got a legit punter. You tell him to go kick. The, maybe the, the Maddo might try to get them to jump. That but, might be what they're doing right now. Yeah. So the clock, I believe, will start, and it will. So they're going to be able to run this thing down, and then he may try to just get them to they jump. They might there. just run it down to I would let's play. And he got right him to there. jump. He got him to jump, and he did it. That's I, you know, as a, as a coach, well, as a coach, that is so frustrating, though, because you know exactly what they're trying to do. Right. I mean, and they didn't. He oh, had, yeah, yeah. Thirty-seven time. seconds on the play clock. Yet. Yes. Those guys had to stand there for thirty. They had to stand there for forty seconds, and that essentially just ended the game. And he got a defense uh, offside, so it's a first and ten for the Chucks down to the. 36-yard uh, line, and the clock's now going to go near two minutes before they run this play. It'll be about 2.10 or so when they run it. As Thomas will be the eye back, he'll keep it. And he'll have room, and he's going to go. Bo Thomas is going to go 36 yards for a touchdown. He is having a big night wow. tonight. And that's 36 yards for Bo Thomas. And, nope, there's a flag down, Eric, at the 30. No, uh, after I just wrote so, it down. Yep, and I was too. So so I just looked up. There's a penalty marker down, <sighs> and it's going to be a hold on to Chucks. Bring it back to the 40, so it's going to bring up first down and 14. Man, <sighs> I wrote that down already. Me too. Clock stopped at 2.06. Nice run. <laughs> Bo ran away from their yeah. uh, defense. Play clock starting. At the the clock will stop here because that offensive penalty. So, clock uh, will not start until the play goes off. So they can hustle up to the line here and get something going. Mm -hmm. Still three timeouts for Carn City, but they're really. I think they're just kind of, you know, content here. As Thomas again tries to get it outside, he's caught up and for the they were coming, so he just got down. No gain. Second down and fourteen. That's the right thing to do as a back there. And I really, I honestly think we would just kneel down. I don't, Carn City is not going to take the timeouts. They have, th they would have been doing this a long time. They're, they're going to 35-21. Again, we're running it down as far as we can. Trying to, we're trying to, I'm sure Coach Higley and Coach Moore over here trying to do the math and figuring out yeah, what if they, we can just down it. You know, it is second down. So we couldn't probably we couldn't run it out by downing it two more times, but we could really get pretty yeah, close get it here. down to nothing, get a punt off. As again, we could try to draw them off. As they'll just call a timeout at one eleven, so Punksy will take their timeout as their second timeout. We'll stay here. Just remind everybody about our in First Bank post game show coming up after the game. Uh, we'll have the final uh, second half of the. Scores along with Eric's stats. We'll have our Lily Sweet play of the half, which I might go out on a limb with something different, Eric. I'm trying to mix it up a little bit. I'll have to discuss that with you here after a bit. And then also uh, we'll have our Garrett Gazzani player of the game. And I know one young I man mean, is having a heck of a game, and it's probably going to – it's it's definitely a repeat, yeah, I repeat mean, guy, I'm, and it's just I'm the way it is tonight. So 
and that's okay. Barring a hold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, we'll stay tuned for that as well. But uh, all that all coming up in our in First Bank post game show here after a minute and 11 of playing time. The Chucks, second down and 14 from the 40. See ya, Todd. As that Punksy will just kneel now. And I mean, I, you know what? I'll give Carn City a lot of credit here to it. Run the clock. <laughs> As they'll lose a yard. But you know, I, I give Carn City a lot of credit here, Eric. They're just, they. Right, right. they're it's not over. coming in here. They're no. not, you know. The game's over. You know, even though. It's third down. Yeah, we can kneel one more, and then even on fourth. Well, the game's over. Right. Could we be able to kneel one more time? And then the officials are very good at waiting <laughs> to set the ball sometimes. It's, it's amazing how they can take their time. But this will run down. To, yeah, this is going to do it. So Hetrick will go under center here with 33 seconds left. Take a couple steps back. Drop it at 30. And that'll do it. The Chucks. We'll go to 5-2 and two in the season, a 35-21 win over the Carn City Gremlins who fall to 3-4. and four. We'll take a, uh, we'll a two-minute break, Jimmy. We'll take a two-minute break and we come back. We'll have the in-first bank postgame show for you. You're listening to Laurel Eye Clinic, Jefferson County High School Sports Night right here on the Groundhog. 10 Lawn and Gardens inventory reduction events going on now. Overstocked with lawnmowers, zero turns, tractors, snow plows, and snow blowers. Brands you can trust. Gag, Ferris, Simplicity, Snapper, Wright, Still Zero Turns, LS Tractors, Meyer, and Snow Wave Snow Plows. All units are priced to sell with instant rebates on all in-stock models up to $1,000. Hurry in. These deals won't last. 310 Lawn and Garden, your local... Russell Myers will be coming up on our 100th anniversary at the New York Room in Punxsutawney. It's probably the oldest, finest restaurant you've never heard of in Jefferson County. I remember my mother being angry over one problem or another in the business, and her and my father were working at each other, and my mom would say, well, we must be doing something right, Chuck, because we're still here. The New York Room in Punxsutawney is 310. You know, some people just don't care for their eyes as well as they should. But the fact of the matter is, your eyes are one of your most precious gifts. Why take chances with your eyesight? Grivel Eye Care can give you a whole new view of the world. Professional eye examination, cataract surgery, and a great selection of glasses and contacts. Gribble Eye Care is your family's total vision center. You depend on your eyes. Depend on Gribble Eye Care. Call 938-4777 for an appointment. Gribble Eye Care. Flex challenges can sometimes catch us off guard, but at Marion Center Bank, we believe in safeguarding your financial future. Introducing... On after this one, fellas. Good game. Yeah, it was a good game. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks again for them uh, cupcakes. No problem. All. You all right? Everything good? Everything's good. All right, great. Driver's license, preventing fraudulent activities. Contact local branch office or visit us at MarionCenterBank.com for more information. Marion Center Bank, member FDIC. Welcome back to the uh, In First Bank postgame show. DJ and Eric with you. And, uh, boy, it's good to see a hard-fought game out there and uh, both teams uh, on the middle of the field uh, in prayer. Um, so that, that's really what it's all about right there, Eric, honestly. I mean, you know, both teams played hard. Uh, there were some really good hard hits. There were some real good uh, defensive stops. There were some good offensive plays. and real good But at the end, stops. it comes down to uh, just both teams uh, coming together as, as, as high school football players. And uh, really good to see uh, that sportsmanship by both teams out here to do uh, uh, a big stop on the first drive for Carn City and then Punxsy comes right back a 17 yard pass Hetrick to Thomas uh, in their first possession and that made it 28-14 stop Carn City again they turned it over on downs and then right back Bo Thomas from a 35 yard run made it 35-14 and you know as we talk Carn City they just they don't they don't have that firepower to uh, keep it rolling. No, so, they don't have a quick strike. And, and that's that's just how they're built. 
they got hard runners. They can run, but they don't have that quick strike. And, so, and they didn't change their game plan. They no. said, we're going to just run the ball. We're going to do what we do. I truthfully believe, I, I mean, I think they thought they could run on this Punxy team. And, I mean, I'll tell you, I mean, yeah, uh, Punxy gave up two big runs. But beyond those two big runs, uh, they, they didn't give up much of anything. Uh, Kramer ended the night with 92 yards rushing and a touchdown. 58.